Welcome everybody. I want to describe direct product groups. So direct products are ways to piece together groups in order to get larger ones. An important perspective to have is direct products are also ways to understand the larger groups. So if you have a large complicated group, you can ask, does it break up into simpler pieces at, via direct products? If so, you can think of that large complicated group as not being so complicated. It's just a simple combination of these simpler parts. But, but sometimes a large complicated group might not break up into simpler pieces. Okay, so sometimes a large group does not break up into direct products of small ones. So let me give the definition and then we'll, we'll do some examples. Pretend I have N different groups, G1, G2, G3, all the way up to Gn. So their direct product group is denoted G1 times G2 times dot, 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 times Gn. First, let me tell you what the elements are, and then I'll tell you what the uh, group operation is. So this group, its elements are things of the form little g1, comma, little g2, comma, dot, 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 all the way up to little gn, where um, element little gi is in the group capital GI. Okay. So that, that's just the elements of this group. I haven't told you how to multiply two elements yet. Already, you can see what the size of this group is. So the size of this product is the product of the sizes. Okay, so, you know, maybe let me make this more explicit. What's the size of Z mod 2Z cross Z mod 3Z? It's the size of Z mod 2Z, which is two. Times the size of Z mod 3Z, which is three. So six. Another remark is that <clears throat> people will also sometimes denote this as G1 direct sum, G2 direct sum. Okay. If you're only combining a finite number of groups, these two are exactly the same. They actually differ if you're combining an infinite number of groups together, but we won't get to that in this class. Notationally, you should think of these as exactly the same, and we'll only use the first notation. Let me finish my definition. This direct product group has these lists of elements as single elements um, with um, the component-wise operation. So what do I mean by that? How do I multiply G1 dot, 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 all the way up to Gn by G1 prime all the way up to Gn prime? So think of these as two different elements in my direct product group. The way I combine them is just component wise. Little G1 and little G1 prime both live in the group G1. So I can multiply them in the group capital G1. And then, you know, sitting here, I have a little G2 and a little G2 prime. They're both elements in the group G2. So I can combine them in that group G2. Do this all the way down until I get to elements little Gn and little Gn prime. They both live in this group capital Gn. So let's combine them in that group. So 
this product right here is in G1, this product is in G2, this product is in Gn. And I've just defined this product, this binary operation, which is in the product group. Public question so far? Okay, let's do say two examples right now. Um, let's look at Z mod 2Z, direct product Z mod 3Z as, as its elements. It should be ordered pairs, just an element in Z mod 2Z, comma, an element in Z mod 3Z. So I could have zero and zero, zero and one, or zero and two. So, so far I've put zero with all of the three elements of Z mod 3Z. And then I could also pair one with all of those elements. Right, and then its operation looks like, let's just do a, a sample combination. Let's combine, um, let's combine one, two, maybe with itself. Okay. So first I combine one and one in Z mod two Z. So I get one plus one mod two. And then I combine two and two in the second group Z mod three Z. So that's two plus two mod three. So one plus one mod two is two mod two, which is zero. And two plus two mod three is four mod three, which is one. Let's do one more. So maybe let's take um, one, one, and combine that with um, zero, two. So this is one plus zero in the first group. So I add them mod two. And then I have one plus two in the second group. So I combine them mod three. And I get one and then three mod three, which is zero. Let's do one more example. You can combine whatever groups you want. The groups don't have to have anything to do with each other. Okay. So let's consider this group D4, symmetries of the square. Ross Z mod 3Z. The symmetries of the square don't really have anything to do with Z mod 3Z, right? D4 is this group that has eight elements. It has four rotations, rotate by zero, 90, 180, or 270. And it also has four flips, okay? So th this is a group of symmetries under composition. And, and Z mod 3Z is a group of just numbers under modition mod 3. But it, it's still a group. Um, you can combine them. And you know, what if, for example, I take this rotation by 90 and then I look at the number two and I combine it with the rotation by 180 along with the element one. Right. So how do I get the answer? I just combine these two rotations in the group D4 of rotation or symmetries of the square, which gives me this rotation by 270 degrees. And then I combine these in this group, Z mod 3Z. Two plus one is three, which mod three is zero. All right. So I have given the philosophy of direct products. There, ways to combine simple groups into larger groups. Here's the precise definition of the elements and how you multiply them. I should close this parentheses.
the size of a product group is the products of the sizes of the various groups. So Z mod two Z cross Z mod three Z, it's a group of size six. And I've listed those six elements here. You can combine whatever groups you want. They don't have to do anything. They don't have to have anything to do with each other. So in this last example, I combined a group of symmetries with a, a group of integers mod three. Public questions about direct products? All right, thanks so much.